So as I'm sure many of you are aware, there's this new TV show coming out called The Last of Us. I don't know, it's based off this really great 2013 video game. I hope you guys are as stoked for it as I am. I know I'm already caught up. I've watched both of the episodes that have released so far, and I thought they were phenomenal. Don't worry, no spoilers for The Last of Us in this, at least not for the TV show. But as I've been watching The Last of Us and, you know, refreshing myself on the video game, I've, I'm preparing, you know, for, for what is going to be likely a very bleak TV show. I mean, if you're aware at all of the video game, you know, it's it's not exactly like happy-go-lucky, the, the brightest thing you've ever seen in your life. I mean, you've got some scenes like the giraffe scene, you know, that fills you with that little bit of hope, but they're quashed pretty quickly. And so as I've been preparing for The Last of Us, that got me thinking a little bit about deaths in video games that kind of stuck with me. And I mean, deaths in video games aren't anything new. I mean, we play video games all the time. People die in video games all the time. Sometimes those are real people, and it certainly doesn't hurt our feelings when we kill someone in Call of Duty or Overwatch. But when you're playing through RPGs or very specific games, there are some character deaths that stick with you and, and can affect you in some ways. And this is something that a lot of people who don't play video games don't understand. That is that video games can have an emotional impact. They're not all just shoot the cool gun six. I in fact had an ex-girlfriend one time who after I told her I'd played uh, What Remains of Edith Finch and told her that I had a really hard time finishing it because it was so emotional. She's like, what do you, what do you mean emotional? Like video games aren't emotional. She thought the genre of video games stopped at Call of Duty. So today we're going to go on a little bit deeper level and talk about some video games and some deaths that really stuck with us. Now if you have any video game deaths that you remember that aren't mentioned in this video, go ahead and let me know down in the comments which characters really stuck with you? Were they ones the game intended or were they ones that you brought about yourself? And if you don't have anything to say or any in memoriam you'd like to put in there, just comment down your favorite emoji. Your engagement really does help out the channel. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the video. I should also mention, since we're going to be talking about major deaths that occur in these video games, that this is by nature going to include spoilers from all of the, these video games we're going to talk about. So I will put a list of all the video games down in the description so you may avoid any sections that involve any spoilers. So make sure to check out the description so you don't have any video games spoiled for you. Now, since The Last of Us TV show is what made me think about this entire topic, I think a natural place to start is with The Last of Us video game. And The Last of Us video game is filled with a lot of death, like a lot of people die in The Last of Us, as you might expect. But I think the one that stands out to me the most, at least, is going to be Sarah from The Last of Us in the prologue. Unless you went into this knowing that the story was going to be about Joel and Ellie, I have to imagine that you, like me, did not expect that Sarah's story was going to end in the prologue. To my knowledge, that's probably the only time I've played a video game and and who you would think is going to be a main character dies at the beginning of the game. I mean, I'm not necessarily sure what I expected and definitely as the prologue went on, it began to look more and more bleak for our protagonists. But again, I thought that Sarah was going to be one of our video game protagonists. Protagonists, as we all know, are equipped with this super thick shield of plot armor. And we're trained as video gamers to know that protagonists can't die. That is like rule number one of any video game is the protagonist does not die. And so for me, I haven't gotten over, and I don't know that I'll ever get over that scene where Joel and Sarah encounter the soldier and, and you're, as Joel, helpless to do anything to save your daughter. And I don't know, that was a really like tough moment in that game and it really set us up for, you know, it let you know ahead of time, like this is not gonna be a game filled with puppy dogs and rainbows. This is going to be a very serious, very uh, depressing at sometimes video game. Well, Naughty Dog, you certainly didn't lead us astray. You let us know that from the beginning. And so Sarah from The Last of Us has to be the first entry on this list of video game characters whose death stayed with us. I know, baby, I know. Listen to me, I know this hurts me. You're gonna be okay, baby, stay with me. I'm gonna pick you up. I know, baby, I know it hurts. Come on, baby, please. I know, baby, I know. Sarah. Baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Now, our next entry is going to be about a game that actually does not, if you choose to play it this way, have to incur any death at all throughout the entire game. And the game actually doesn't want you to kill anyone. But if you so choose to, you can be a monster and start killing all the monsters in Undertale. Now in Undertale, there are a lot of really sad deaths should you determine you want to go the genocide route and start killing everyone off. Most notably, I think Papyrus is probably the most heartbreaking one because he still believes in you even as you, you know, murder him. And I'm going to be honest that I don't know that I had one particular death 
that really stuck with me in Undertale. But really there was one moment and it was actually on this channel, I live streamed it, where it was the culmination of all of the deaths that all of the kills that I had incurred along the way. And just like every single monster just kind of weighed on me. And then whenever you have to fight Undyne the Undying, like I didn't realize, I mean, I knew, but I hadn't really come to terms with how evil of a monster I had been throughout this until she gives her speech where she just explains how like she has to stop you right then and there, which spoiler, she doesn't stop you because you're a monster and you have to finish the game. But she explains that she has to stop you, otherwise you're going to kill everyone and the underground will cease to exist and all the monsters will die. And I mean, Undertale has been a game that has made me cry in multiple different areas. I 100% cried at the end whenever you learn about Azrael's death and they play like the Undertale theme. Like that really got me, but I can't list that as my video because I also played it like two o'clock in the morning. I was tired and emotions were just at a high. But on live stream in, in front of God and everybody, Undying the Undying really got to me and made me realize just how evil a genocide route truly is. And I was never able to actually finish this. I never finished that run. Um, it, the save game is still on my PS5 and I, I cannot bring myself to complete it because of that moment and just how evil it truly made me feel. So uh, this may be a cop out, but it is truly just the culmination of every monster in Undertale from doing a genocide route. It really does make you feel like a garbage person when you're doing it. And it really got me. So. Everyone in Undertale that you die up until the point of undying the undying really got to me and, and stuck with me um, as characters that I've killed. Now, as we've talked about The Last of Us TV show, and I guess extraordinarily minor spoilers for like the first episode of The Last of Us, a friend of mine actually asked me today if there were any animal deaths in The Last of Us because he wasn't sure how his wife would handle animal deaths. To which I replied, I don't, I don't think so. I don't recall any. I mean, there are kids that die though. To which he replied, nah, screw them kids. We really only care about the animals. And like that probably checks. Like we're fine with watching The Walking Dead. We can watch The Last of Us, but God forbid we ever watch Old Yeller. And so I would be remiss if I did not include an animal of some form in this video. And if I have to think of any animal that died that really stuck with me in a video game, it has to be Bloodwing from Borderlands 2. Like just that moment when you have to fight Bloodwing as a boss fight, like you've got this sinking feeling that something's not going to end well for Bloodwing, but but you're, you know, you have this aspiration that you're going to defeat Bloodwing, you're going to take off the collar, you're going to be able to return Bloodwing to Mordecai. And this entire time, like you're living on this hope that you're going to be able to, you know, rescue Bloodwing. And I mean, I don't know about you guys. Let me know down in the comments what your reaction was in Borderlands 2 whenever you took that collar off and Bloodwing's head just isn't there anymore. Like that super got me. And that was just such a hard death in Borderlands, especially because Borderlands is not known for being a very deep or very, you know, depressing video game. I mean, you have the likes of if you don't complete a quest, you now have enemies that are called boner farts. Bloody balls. What a bonus trade box. Ugh, I'm sorted. I'm so sick of coming up with names for you know what? Boner fart. All of the bets right, we're calling them boner farts now. And if you talk to Miss Moxie and get her favorite weapon, you can if essentially turn your controller into a sex toy. Sorry, children. So like for this extraordinarily jovial game, the Bloodwing death just really stands out even more as like, for me, the lowest point of Borderlands 2. And if you've played Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, then you know that that was also one of the harder things for her as well. But also if you've played Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, if you're telling me that that end scene, if you try to tell me that you didn't get just all of the goosebumps in that final scene, then you might dream of Electric Sheep. Thank you. As the sorcerer's fatal spell hurtled toward the oblivious night, it was clear that only a miracle would save him. But luckily for the night, a miracle is exactly what he got. All right, so the next entry is from a game that is is once again not exactly a lighthearted game in any sense. Like at any point is this game considered lighthearted? And it truly is completely filled with death. Like you go through the game learning about the deaths of all of these people. And that game is going to be What Remains of Edith Finch. 
Now, I anticipate this is a game that not many of you have played, and that's completely fine. It's not, you know, and I would certainly encourage you to give it a try. It's one of those games you can complete in like two hours. And it is one of those, I don't know if sophisticated is the right word, but it's one of those games that hits you on a deeper level. It's not about just shooting people and, and random wants and slaughter or anything like that. Like it is about just being abundantly human. And up until this point that we're about to talk about in the game, like there are definitely people that die at like, but they're kind of weird deaths or at least deaths that don't hit super close to home in my opinion. But then we get to Lewis Finch from What Remains of Edith Finch. And no jokes here guys, like this one actually really hit me hard. Like I actually had to take a break from the game because it really affected me emotionally. Now, if you've not played the game, Lewis Finch is Edith Finch's older brother and someone that was really close to Edith. And you learn as his story progresses that he suffered from some major mental health issues. He had a boring dead end job that he didn't really enjoy. He found his life, especially his life that was bereft of drugs to be boring and, and he didn't enjoy his life. He then created in his mind this, this fantasy world where he was like the king of this entire world and it was, and it was all great, but he knew that this world wasn't real and that it didn't exist and that only deepened his depression. Eventually the weight of Lewis's mundane, boring life and more importantly the fact that his imagined life and his real life were just so vastly different and he really wanted, you know, to be with his fantasized self that he eventually took his own life. Like I said guys, no jokes here, like this was truly like for me a heartbreaking moment in the game. I think probably almost everyone here know someone that has gone through some sort of depression or or been in that place themselves and this was really hard and this is to this day still uh still a death that sticks with me so i do apologize if this brings down the mood of the game but this uh, i mean it has to go in here and like i said um you need to go play what remains of edith finch it's just it's truly a phenomenal game it may hit you kind of hard with some really big feelings but it really makes you feel things and it's it's a phenomenal game. But Lewis has to make this list and his death has certainly stuck with me. All right, so before we go any further, I do have to make an honorable mention in this. And it's important to say that this person should not be an honorable mention at all by any means. And I'm not putting them as an honorable mention here because they don't deserve to make the list. Uh, maybe once you hear my rationale, it'll make a little bit of sense to you. But the honorable mention is going to be Aerith from Final Fantasy VII. And I know you video game purists out there saying, why is she not number one on this list? Because she has to be the most striking video game character death probably in the history of video games. Well, there's two reasons. One, I haven't played the original Final Fantasy VII, so I didn't get to experience the death of Aerith. I still recognize it as an extremely huge moment in gaming and a huge character death that occurred, but I don't relate to it on the same level. The other reason that I don't include her in this list is because I just finished playing Final Fantasy VII Remake and with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming out at the end of this year, part of me is just really, really hoping that I'm not going to have to experience Aerith's death. Like I'm hoping if I just avoid it and I just, you know, pretend like it's not going to happen that maybe it won't happen in Final Fantasy VII. Reaper. But that being said, Aerith certainly deserves a place on this list. I just can't really do her justice myself, but I recognize that she is a massive character death um, that I'm sure most gamers would acknowledge need to be on this list. All right, so the next character that's going to be on our list is on here for two reasons. One, because his death was very depressing and because he was such a well-written and great character in his game, but also because the character you play after him I absolutely hate it. And that may be a me problem. Like that may be an unpopular opinion. You may love this character, but our next character death is going to be Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm gonna be honest. I loved playing as Arthur Morgan. I thought he was a really complex character. I thought he was extraordinarily interesting. I absolutely loved his story arc through Red Dead Redemption 2. One of the reasons this also sticks out with me is because I didn't know, I had never played Red Dead Redemption 1. So I did not realize that Red Dead Redemption 2 was a prequel to Red Dead Redemption 1, and hence I did not know that since Arthur Morgan wasn't in Red Dead Redemption 1, that he was gonna die in two. I had a lot of friends that had played the original, and so they knew ahead of time, ah, so we're just kind of waiting to see what happens to Arthur. And for me, I didn't know that, so his death really did catch me by surprise. And it's really sad that like his death was going to be caused 
by a flippin' disease. Like, that was not, that's not the way Arthur deserved to go down, which it's not the way he did go down, but it definitely hastened his descent. And it's so sad because nowadays TB is a curable disease. But back then, I mean, it was a death sentence for our boy Arthur, and that was just incredibly depressing for me to learn. On top of that, not only did I love Arthur so much and think he was such a great character, but on top of that, I hate John Marston so much. I could not stand John. I couldn't stand him at all. When when I got to the epilogue and it's like, great, you now get to play as John Marston. I was like, oh, I, I'm good. I think I think I'm done with this game. Or I might just reload a save before Arthur died. But but in general, I'm good. I, I don't think I need to play as John. So like Arthur Morgan's death kind of not ruined Red Dead Redemption 2 in a sense, but I mean, it really like that put a pin on it. Like I was good whenever Arthur died. It made me really sad. He was a great character and he definitely deserves a place on this list. All right, we're down to the final two and it was really hard for me to pick. These are not necessarily in any particular order, but these last two are. And it was really hard for me to pick between these two, but our penultimate entry is going to have to be Lee from Telltale Games, The Walking Dead. Now, depending on how you played the game, Lee could have grown in a lot of various ways throughout the entire game. But regardless, Lee was Clementine's protector. He was the, you know, he was a good guy. He was an important piece of the game. And I'm sorry to say that ending, like, like I wanna know down in the comments, if you didn't cry once again, like, are you really a human? Like the ending of The Walking Dead was so sad. Just that scene with him and Clementine was just absolutely heartbreaking. Just watching him basically break down the facts of life and making Clementine really have to live out her first like death of someone that was extraordinarily close to her. Lee's death absolutely broke me. Like that is again, easily cried during that moment of The Walking Dead. It was just so well done and even just so much more heartbreaking if Clementine had to pull the trigger. But our penultimate entry just has to be Lee for just, I mean, an absolute heartbreaker of a death at the end of The Walking Dead. Don't be afraid. All right, guys, we've made it to our final entry, and this one just has to be, this guy deserves the ultimate entry on the list. There are a lot of people that die over the course of Mass Effect, especially depending on how you choose to play, what loyalty missions you decide to do. Like, there are a lot of places a lot of different characters can die. But there is one character that I don't, I don't know, just is so unanimously loved by the Mass Effect community and his death I mean, I just don't know that anyone was prepared for it. And that is going to be our boy, Morden Solus. I mean, Morden is just the happiest, go luckiest guy. He's like a little puppy almost, right? Like if you've done any sort of just talking with him outside of doing the main missions, you've you've sang Gilbert and Sullivan with him. You've had some very interesting birds and the bees conversation perhaps with him. And really he's just such a well-written and just such a great character. And his death on Tachanka is just, None of us were ready for it. None of us were prepared for it. And none of us were ready for Morden to go. And don't even pretend like you played the renegade ending where you killed Morden. I know you're not that heartless. Morden's death really hit us in all the feels, but I don't know if you're like me, it didn't hit you until you played the Citadel DLC. In the Citadel DLC, after the party, you find a recording of Morden's various um, recordings where he sang different tunes, where he was, you know, he did like a children's like science show, like basically Bill Nye, the Solarian guy or Solarian alien. I don't, I don't know. But then like you get to that last one where you hear Morden Solis singing Amazing Grace. And like, once again, like that just hits you in all of the feels. That was one of the hardest things to listen to because it just makes you relive Morden's death again. And then you just hear him say, Maybe next time we'll stick to better songs. Like it's just uh, Morden's, it's like he's there with you, but unfortunately he's not. Like Morden, God dang it, why'd you have to leave us so early? So Morden definitely gets the ultimate entry on this video. Well, 
Many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. <sighs> Maybe next time. Until then, we'll stick to patter songs. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for us. Those are seven character deaths and one honorable mention, really, probably a really important one. That stuck with us all in video games. Let me know down in the comments, did you have any other character deaths that should have made this list? Or what character deaths made your list? If you don't have anything to add, just drop your favorite emoji down there. Once again, your engagement really does help out the channel. While you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe, and notification bell so you get notifications for new videos like this. And we will see you guys in a later video. Have a good one.